Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a big hand and be seated. It's my year of breaking limits. That is also my portion in Christ. There shall be the strangest orders of breakthroughs in this 48th year. Amen. But let me start by laying this biblical warning. No believer can survive in the faith without being committed to fellowship. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13. But exhort one another daily where it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Therefore, forsake not the assembly together one another, as some of you do. Hebrews 10, 25, as the man of some is. But exhorting one another, and much more as ye see the day approaching. No believer can survive in the faith without being committed to fellowship. No one, no matter how anointed, can survive in the faith without fellowshipping. We all know that there is no telephone, no matter how costly the handset may be. If it's not charged, it will not deliver. It will not deliver. So no matter how anointed we are, we will continue to require being charged to take charge. If you have a rechargeable touch light, and you don't have time to charge it, the battery will go flat, the light will go off, and darkness will come back. Therefore, let your light so shine, we are the light of the world, we are rechargeable touch light, spiritual rechargeable touch light, No matter how cost, it could be a golden rechargeable lamp, but if you don't charge it, the battery will go flat, the light will go off, and darkness will come back. No one, no matter how anointed, if it's not committed to being in fellowship, his battery, spiritual battery, will soon go flat. His light will soon go out. And darkness will soon come back. It's not that the darkness is powerful. It's because your light is off. Some encounter the hand of God and suddenly can't find it anymore. Because their light has gone off. Some have seen some level of breakthrough. Oh, yeah, I know we have some boat meetings. Uh, for the next five Sundays, I may not be in church. You are not in church on your way to being the cult. I tell you. <laughs> we had a brother in our fellowship years ago. And for three fellowship days, we didn't see him. So when he showed up, I said, hey, Emmanuel, you are gone. He said, no, no, I will just chance. I said, you are gone. Another was telling me, leave him now. Maybe he was just busy. I said, you are gone. He just broke down. He said, can you, sir, 
I've even gone to alcohol. Three weeks. Three weeks. So let me speak to all those holding public offices. Don't toy with your life. Don't toy with your life. You are not in church, you will soon be in court. <laughs> Nature of God's vacuum. Please remain committed to fellowship. It's the only way to keep your spiritual battery charged and to keep your life shining. Don't you ever toy with it. I've been a fellowship addict by the grace of God. And I'm having a really good time. Re very, the devil knows I'm having a good time. Amen. Amen. Please stay committed. Don't let any lockdown lock you off God's presence. Don't let it. Jesus had to create a fellowship platform for himself. He called the twelve that they might be with him. Then later he added 70 to it. And that is one born of the Holy Ghost. That's the living word himself. He had to create a fellowship platform around himself. The apostles came and they were in fellowship in Solomon's porch. Daily. Out of prayer, Peter, let's go. In the temple, in every house. They were in fellowship to stay on course with divine purpose. To command triumphant lifestyle. Everybody needs fellowship. No matter one's calling, no matter the anointing upon anyone, you don't commit to fellowship. Your battery is on the way going flat. Darkness is on the way coming back. And the later end of such individual is always worse than the beginning. God forbid. God forbid. Why am I saying this? There shall be strange liftings. May no one here disqualify himself for it. Because when God sees that you are, he's likely to lose you, he will keep you where you are. So develop a crave for God. Develop a crave for his presence because that's where he shows you the part of life which puts you in command of the supernatural. He made his ways known unto Moses and his act through Moses to the children of Israel. They go from strength to strength as they appear in Zion. And Zion is the church of Christ. Hebrews 12. 22, 24. So you're either going from strength to strength or going from weakness to weakness. Like they have it in them. Going, 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 go. It keeps going and going and going and then go. Things that eyes have not seen or ears heard, <laughs> it's already here. Amen. May no one disqualify himself for his portion. Because he knows your thoughts are far off. Yes, he knows what we think next year. He knows what we think 10 years to come. He knows. You shall not be left behind. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Psalm 67 and verse 5 to 7 is going to be your new song. Amen. He said, The Lord, he said, God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. The kind of blessings that causes nations to fear is coming. Amen. 
For out of Zion shall proceed the law and the word of the law from Jerusalem. <laughs> Authority in every field of human endeavor shall be domiciled in the church. The end time church, which we are. <laughs> we are right towards the end of the later days. The last days began in the upper room. And that's about 2,000 years back. So we have moved quite some distance in the last days. And of Zion in these days shall be said, this and that man was born in her. Oh. Amen. And the highest himself shall establish her. So it's God's end time agenda that who is who in every field of human endeavor shall be located in Zion. Amen. Amen. The Lord shall count when he shall write up the people that this man was born there. <laughs> as well as the singers, as the players of instruments shall be there. All my springs are in thee, O Zion. All the springs of life shall be domiciled in Zion. The kind of giants that has never passed through human history we begin to emerge. So it's time to build spiritual capacity. Because and here, when it's a child, different nothing from a servant. It's time to build spiritual capacity. By being committed to fellowship, where you start going from strength to strength, from strength to strength. And who, who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Why hang around fellowship? I will give you pastors after my own heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding that shall come to pass when ye be multiplied and increased in the land. In those days, said the Lord, that you will be representing the ark of the covenant of the Lord bodily. Everybody will see God at work inside you. Talking about. Understand that, that word, all this, I can accept what should, should guide me. And when Philip opened the word to him, his eyes got opened, his faith came alive, and he jumped out of darkness into light. And one of the things that will characterize this end time is a heart of gratitude. That culminates in joy and rejoicing. Mm 